Bramble Jam Podcast. Everybody's turned it off. Yeah. We're, Hi, we're, I'm Brandon. I love Wind Calls the Heart. Hey, it's Panda, and I like Wind Calls the Heart. I'm Dan, and I despise Wind Calls the Heart, and this is the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Okay, no, oh, I think we can yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, we yeah. can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> <You> okay. <laughs> It's Thursday, everybody. Thursday. It's so our freshest day. Fre- easily yeah. our freshest day. It's not even Easy. close. We're talking about Winkles the Heart, everybody. Panda, how excited were you to dive back into the, the world of Hope Valley? Can I tell you, it's the highlight. I, I, I've said this before. It is the highlight of my Monday when I roll on in here. Can I tell you uh, that, man, pay you've it ta- off. You, you've you've taken, got to lesson How many five? classes have you been to? Yeah. I'm at five You're now. You're doing it, man. And that... You've you went from two to five, you, and no, I had done YouTube, four. I, I got clear. I the just two forgot the two were blurry. Yeah, the on, two were blurry. But I, I went back as a refresher. Man, a refresher will get you. Yeah. Mm. Um, guys, how are we doing? Great, well? man. Mm. <laughs> really, calm down, Dad. <laughs> so good. I know you love this. I know love you love when calls, calls the heart. heart. Um, Bramble Jam Plus, man, we had such a fun time yesterday. Lunch with the boys. Lunch with the boys. Um, for all access members, every month we do a little zoomy zoom lunch with the boys. Um, and if you missed it and you're like, oh man, that sounds fun, go to BrambleJamPlus.com. You can get this show, all of our other shows ad free. You get exclusive uh, Yo Gavel Gavel, exclusive Bayside. Depending on the tier, you also get a lot of other fun stuff, including our March Madness brackets. Man. If you need help, that's why people fill Filling out bros. that bracket, everybody. We're here for you. We are here for you. Not bragging Next or week, anything, but I crush. Yeah. I crush every year. I crush every year. I crush every year. That's good right. Good stuff. That's right. Kansas of Kansas. Kansas of Kansas. <laughs> when calls the heart, love comes first. And for those of you that watched last week on the YouTube, Daniel Lissing not joining us this week, but I, I would love it if you'd stick around anyway. That's just like... Australia, chip, chip. Is it step in time? Like yeah. That is not Australian at all. Barbie, when calls the heart. Oh, Daniel Lissing. Saying Barbie does not Barbie. make it. Barbie. Who does it better, me or Brand? Put another shrimp on the Barbie. Sadly, you yeah. do it better. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're talking about episode where, 10 of yours? season one, March. Let's put another shrimp on the body. So are you rigged just doing? No, <laughs> it's no, it's somewhere in between. Why would I be rigged? Rig. I can't be No, rigged. doing an impersonation That is my of rig. rig impersonation. Yeah, that doing is, that's what I was saying. Yeah. That's pretty good. Put another shrimp on the Barbie. That's perfect. Yell a little louder. Holy cow. Did she say Barbie? I think she did. Mm. Um, when calls the heart, season one, episode ten, love comes first. That's the name of the episode. It originally aired on March fifteenth, twenty fourteen, and it went a little something like this. So you guys remember last week, Jack, gone, went on out. I wonder how long he'll be gone for. <laughs> well, Elizabeth is putting on, um, I don't know, a brave face for her and a dog. She's responsible now for. Jack's dog. Um, she try, you know, she's trying her best to be like, you know, everything's great. This is the best for whatever. But you know, she's having a tough time with that too. And the kids are like, oh, we miss Mountie Jack. And she's like, yes, I miss him too. Um, Jack, um, trying to figure out like, what do I do in my life? He's just riding through the forest, and he uh, comes across some other Mounties, and they're like, hey, man, we gotta get this Tolliver game. We gotta get this Tolliver game under control. They are bad news bears. And Jack is like, well, I. I can't go far. Like, I can't leave now that I know the Tolliver gang is close by. I got to figure this out. So he is committed to helping the gang catch the gang. The Mounties. <laughs> Find the, yeah. the Mountie gang. Uh, get the gang. Um, so you guys remember um, Mr. Gowan? Boy, do I. So Mr. Gowan, in that partnership uh, with Abigail, Abigail um, is suspicious that Mr. Gowan is responsible for the death of all those miners. Remember the, the mega funeral. So Gowan 
is gone out of his office. Abigail shows up, drops off the 50% cut, and then starts sneaking around some more. And she finds a folder that she thinks this is going to be the stuff that proves that Gowan is the bad guy. Now, also remember, Elizabeth's sister is in town, and she has, you know, uh, gotten gotten in cadoodles with uh, Nate, Nate, Nathan, Tol, 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 Tolivan, Tolivan. And uh, they're close, and she's, you know, giving them shaves and making them look all good and whatnot. Um, and she goes up to Elizabeth, and she's like, man, I love this guy. I love this guy is the stuff. Um, and Elizabeth is like, I don't know. I don't get a good vibe about this and all of that other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, Gowan comes walking into Abigail's cafe, and he's like, uh, um, hey, uh, I know what you did. I know what you took. And I want to give you this little piece of information. If you go to tell people about this, I want you to know something about your husband. Your husband was my second, my right-hand man, <laughs> my second in command. If you tell people, I'm going to tell them the truth, that your husband was the one who was in charge of safety in the first place. So if anybody's responsible for the death of those people by cutting corners and trying to save money, it was your husband. Your husband killed your son. Man, them's fighting words. Forgive me. Pa. Um, there's also uh, the uh, the uh, the Sullivan gang is looking for Nate, right? They're looking for Nate. They're trying to find him. Nate is uh, in Hope Valley. No one knows who he is, but they're about to find out because the Tullivan gang is on the loose and there's posters being put up about. You got to find these Tullivan boys. And they show up, they find Nate. And uh, they they go to uh, Abigail and Elizabeth and Julie, the sister, and they are... Um, they're like, hey, where's Nate? Where's Nate at? We know he's here. Where's Nate? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And uh, old uh, Julie's like, Nathan, Nate's changed. And Nate's like, barges in. He's like, I haven't changed. Let's get these women in ropes and and tell them, tell them what's up. So they tie him up and they bring him upstairs. And they're like, listen, uh, you, you, I haven't changed. You don't know me, blah, 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 and all that good stuff. So they take uh, take um, uh, um, Elizabeth and Julie to that cabin in the woods. You know the one? Yep. And Jack comes wandering back into town to try to get the scuttlebutt about if Nate's been around. And he discovers Abigail was left by, was left behind, you know, tied up yeah. in, uh, in the cafe. That's right. Uh, cafe's open, by the way. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, he's like, what's going on? And she's like, go, uh, go find go find him. And so he go, he has, has to come up with this idea. Like, I, I'm only one guy. I yeah. got this other guy who's, you know, sleeping in the jail cell. But aside from that, like, we got, we got, you know, a few other boys. But, like, we don't have enough, like, to take down these guys. So he comes up with one doozy of That's a right. plan. And that doozy is to use some red blankets. Tablecloths. Tablecloths, whatever. And put them on the horses in such a way that if you look if in the you just woods, shine the flashlight. it looks like a red coat. That's right. And so they go to the cabin in the woods, and uh, Nate's like, you'll never take me alive. And he's like, look at those red coats. And he's like, ah, oh, dang it. Um, and uh, the other guy, uh, the jail cell uh, red coat, shoots <laughs> Nate. Uh one of Nate's dudes. One yeah. of Nate's dudes, and they're like, "Oh wow, they're they're sh they're shooting now!" And Jack goes to take Nate, and uh, his uh, uh, Jack's hat falls down, so he goes to get his hat, and uh, and and and, Jay and and Nate is like, "Hey, win!" And he goes to attack attack Jack, and Jack's like, "Nah, hit the road, baby!" And uh, gets him down, arrests them, and uh, very excited, like very exciting stuff's going on here but there's a lot of there's shooting and, and hitting and all that good stuff uh bring them back there arrest them and jack does let uh, elizabeth know how much he misses her um they agree you know i still gotta i still gotta go but they're gonna see each other soon they write letters at the end and that my friends was when calls the heart love comes first we did it. Exactly right. I uh, I saw jail cell red coat live. <laughs> Not great. No. Not great. No, um, I, I was at that studio show. Studio voice. He has a studio he voice. Has a studio he voice. There's no exactly. way around it. I was in the pit. I was in, in the, the pit, pit for that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kept <laughs> he kept throwing stuff at us. It's wild. Yeah. He Crutches? has a bunch of stuff on stage. 
He just keeps throwing it. Machinery? That's his bit. Struck it in down there. And it's he just dangerous. kept yelling, he was the new Gallagher. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but he, there weren't any like hammers or watermelons. Like he just would grab things and throw them full speed at your face. Your friend got hit with an overhead projector. He did get hit with Has over. not recovered. He is not. No. No. He, he now, like, if, uh, if, you, if you put, this is actually a pretty cool party trick, though. If you put a piece of paper on his chest, yeah. his eyes glow. <laughs> and he, <laughs> and he I love how <laughs> in this world, when you get hit with something, you take on its, its properties. <laughs> Not usually. Yeah. But you got, Old school projectors, though, yes. You got, you got hit with a Chia pet, and now you look like this. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> You son of a... Back everybody oh, to Dyke the Homework. Mm. We're talking about um, love Conquers comes all. first. <laughs> man. <laughs> love comes first. Yeah. And it does, doesn't it, it does, boys? Man. Um, episode 10. We have two more left after this of season one. <sighs> you all right? Yeah, I'm just, it's just sad that's coming. Why is it in. sad? There's like 800 <laughs> episodes left. I just, I've really enjoyed my time in season one. Thank you. Well, let's talk about this episode in particular, yeah. Panda. Uh, let's start with the hot take. Let's share how you felt about this episode in particular of this program. What do you think, pal? I, I don't know how to spell it out any more clearly for all the folks at home, but this is the best episode yet. Mm. Maybe ever. Haven't seen the whole show yet. Yeah. So yet is correct. <laughs> so yet is correct. But is it probably going to be top 10 by the end of the year? End of uh, the year? Yeah, probably. Probably, because it's amazing. Uh, and you're going to be hard-pressed to find a better way to what spend 40 so minutes. Great. Uh, Dan, what do I? What more do I need to say? There's a gunshot? Uh, Singular? Yeah, literally, I think there's just one gunshot. No one else shoots a gun. Gunshot. Uh, and then also, Mounty Jack almost gets stabbed, but he doesn't. Uh, there's this is why love. it's the best episode. There's love and there's uh, betrayal. Uh, there's a kidnapping. People are getting tied up. There's real risk. There's real reward. And this, it, this is transcendent. I love this episode of somewhere Blake in Calls there. The you said this is the best episode because people are getting tied up. Yeah, because it's risky. Yeah, it's risky business out there. Mm -hmm. You guys know how Tiger's real name is Eldrick. I do know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Eldrick Woods. It's a weird name. What if there it, was an actual like woods, a forest? A forest called Eldrick, Eldrick, Eldrick woods. woods. Yeah, it sounds like a horror movie kind <laughs> of thing, doesn't it? <laughs> If you were to cast, I just want to say, if you were to cast some sort of horror movie that takes place in Eldrick Woods, who would you cast? Oh, man. DiCaprio, maybe? Okay. Um, I know what I'd call it. I'd call it tapes from Eldrick Woods. I want to tell you who I have in mind. Who do you you know Will Smith's kids? Yeah. The boys? Really? I'd cast them. You'd cast them. I would cast Trey. Trey. <laughs> and I'd cast... Uh, Jalen? Jalen. What about Willow? Whip, whip my what, hair back no, and forth. No, it's just, it's just, I do. It's just the boys. <laughs> it's just the boys. It's wild. So I, uh, I obviously fantastic episode. And I want to tell you why this is a fantastic episode. One, legit drama, Peril. feeling it, yeah. gunshot, boom. Um, but also, my 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 um, my boy Gowan crushes it in this episode. Like, he brings it. The scenes between him and Abigail, and he's, like, confronting her and telling her, and just, like, good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, between that, those two scenes, you have yourself one heck of a program. Uh, so, yes, best episode so far. Fantastic stuff. I'm excited to see what happens in the, in the last two episodes. Um, we'll see what happens. If Jack sticks around, I'm not making any promises here. Um, but, yeah, loved it. Yeah. This is this show's interminable. I, I, guys, I'm not. You can ask Brandon. Like it really. Like I love my job. Watching this show is such a chore. Um, it's just just. So's being your friend. Oh God, I'm. It's <laughs> it's it's, it it's such a it's such a drag. I thought this was like this was like Return of the King. I thought it was over at least three times. Like, I got up from my chair three times, and there was another scene still coming. 
the, how, even, how do you feel that way? About wait, this? wait a minute. Well, I I can I feel that way because that's how I feel. That's no, no. But how? Not, <laughs> that's pretty straightforward. I said it. How? But the, the even the even number episodes in this show have a lot more action than the odd number of episodes. So it would stand to reason that the even number of episodes would go by quicker. And what's weird is is yes, this episode did have the most action that we've had in an episode yet. And it somehow felt longer. And I don't know how that's possible. The best episode to me is the episode where they're trying to figure out who burned down the church. Like that coupling is the best. Um, but still not Oh my good. gosh, you keep going back to this church well. I just don't know what to tell you. I'm trying to find something positive to say. Erin Krako actually, I think, gives the best, her, this is her best episode. I think she's incredibly good in this episode because of the emotions she has to play with wanting, you know, there to be something with Jack, but also not wanting to hold him back. I think she does an outstanding job, even though the material itself suffers tremendously because this show just isn't ever going to end. Uh, 40 minutes of this lasts so much longer than 83 minutes of a Hallmark movie. I just can't tell you. Fit for a Prince went by so much quicker hey, than this movie did. It literally can't take longer because that's not how minutes work. Got him! Got him. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, so yeah, there's my take. I don't really, at some point it's going to be an in, indeterminate, indistinguishable take for me because it is such a slog for me to watch this show. It's bad television. Why don't you take it off? We'll get someone else. Okay. We'll take it off. Done we'll and get, done. We'll get someone. Who do I, we want to get? Fr 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 Frankie's been waiting for his turn. Eunice? No. God, he would not. There's a restraining don't, order. Don't Come tease. On. Don't tease uh, Trace like that. Uh, it's time for the All the Feels. It's part of the show we talk about what in this episode gave us feels. Oh, hey, man. What I'm didn't? Am I right? Sheesh. It just... Uh, People are being tied up. It's crazy. It's wild, man. It's just crazy. Uh, I was surprised that there was a gunshot. Legitimately, like, I could not believe that surprise actually happened. A surprise feels. Uh, I I was a little disappointed it wasn't a little bit more of a, a shootout, but I figured it was as good as, <laughs> it, was as, good as it, we were going to get. But, I mean, I just... There's a standoff going oh. on. Oh, ah, sheesh. I love, guys, I love standoffs. They're wild. You don't know what's going to happen. I love that. I yeah. love this. This was so much fun. Uh, great. It was top notch. B big shootouts, man. Your bar is so low. What do you mean my bar is so low? You don't love shootouts? No, anything that, <laughs> anything that happens, happen. <laughs> anything that happens, you're just like, man, I love this. I do. Like because they, the, God, literally, if they do the bare minimum, you will find a way to make it awesome. Okay. <laughs> Sorry if I live my life wide-eyed like a doe. Uh, and <laughs> oh, so okay. I'm just telling you, pretty excited. You said I love shootouts. You never, <laughs> you never know what's gonna happen. They're gonna shoot each other. You but you don't know that. Sometimes they pull them away, or they like they shoot them up in the air, like a Hamilton. Dummy, dumb, dumb, dumb. You dumb. just don't know. What are they gonna? What are they going to do? It's like it's hot sandwich. Mm. It's not Tuesday anymore. Enough with the sandwich. Yeah, come on, it's past. Every every day is a sandwich day. Amen, buddy. That was good. I'm back on board. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> my all the feels, man. Big that art. that uh that, that guy one that guy one scene that guy like that's good stuff. Like that scene, his acting was top notch. I want to get him on the program and just yes. listen to him say words. Like the guy, the guy that plays Gowan and that character is too good for this program because Jack and Elizabeth are the only thing that I really pull for in this show. The Gowan character, when he gets to show up and just be ruthlessly mean, that's great. It doesn't really, it doesn't really fit the tenor of the show, though. Like you know, when someone finally gets I, to be mean, it's awesome. I don't. No, no, no. I'm I'll, just saying. I love mean people. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> fit what this show's going for. But he does it well. I don't know how they're going to keep him around for 75 episodes. If he is at maybe your husband killed your son in episode 10, <laughs> what is episode 68? I ate your child. <laughs> oh my gosh. I roasted him over a spit. He didn't die in the mine. Like a pig. <laughs> like, what is, what is he going to say? What is he going to do? Forgive me, Pa. <laughs> oh, wow. The diner has. That, this is the darkest moment of the show. <laughs> the diner has termites. <laughs> has for a while. This building is unsafe. Like what? Is, like, are, they, are they like? Are they gonna make him nicer? <laughs> I forgot to bid you adieu. <laughs> like, I'll go down to forty nine percent. I just 
he just is ruthless, man. Like you can't come back from this. You can't get meaner than hey, your your dad your uh, dead husband, husband killed, killed, your, killed your dead son. <laughs> you can't get meaner, right? Dude, the forgive me pie eating the drumsticks are funny, man. <laughs> So funny. Hey, those, for funny those of you that get mad at me, did you watch Sweeney Todd? Those people are putting putting into pies. Meat pies. That's pies. Right. Crazy. It's crazy stuff, man. You never know what's going to happen with a mince pie. Oh, man. I, I love it. We went down to Cannibal. Is Army on the line? Is he here? <laughs> it's Army here. We're having party. Drugs. Body parts. Let's go. Things are getting serious. <laughs> Call me by your name. <laughs> Do you, does Army just say his titles? Does he say, like, I love eating people? And then he's like, Lone Ranger? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Give me another Army movie. There's a social network? Social network! <laughs> Give me a pinky. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. Sorry? <laughs> that one works too easy. Yeah, it does. Uh, what was that, uh, like, a uh, spy movie you was in? Oh, uh, with the, the two guys. Yeah, two Man guys. from Man, Uncle. Man, Man from Uncle. Man from That's Uncle, right. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dan, any feels for you? I told you I did the whole gallon bit. I literally I, the whole thing. That was it. mine. And I said, "Yeah, that." But that's all I have. We'll go to a quick break, break. We'll come back. Chia pet. Uh, and we will not bring up <laughs> Army Hammer or cannibalism in the rest of the show. I promise you that. We're back, everybody. Oh, man. We are back. You got to keep that uh, G-rated status, guys. That's right. Mm. Hey, um, you guys doing good? Doing good. Do you want to keep good. going? I yeah, sure. Let's, let's yeah. go to the Wait What. So the okay. part of the show we talk about what in this episode made us go, wait what? Panda. Uh, the guys, I don't know what to tell you. This it's is, airtight. It's airtight. Like I, from beginning to end, this episode is savagely tight. It grabs you. It it's never like a it, python. It won't let it go. Uh <laughs> Anaconda doesn't let it go. Pythons, I don't think, do that. Do they? Hey, know. when you uh, call somebody and you introduce yourself, do you tell them where you're from to? Like city or company? I don't. Okay. It's just one time. <laughs> Happened cool. once. I got stuck in a... I got stuck, stuck in a loop. There. Stuck in a loop. Couldn't Let's get out. It. Yep. You got nothing? That's all he's got. I right. mean, I miss... Uh, the, the Gowan has a lot of folders about how <laughs> dangerous his minds are. My guy is just throwing folder after folder in the fire. They'll never catch you. But why has he been keeping all of this incriminating evidence? <laughs> you never know when you might need, need it. Need incriminating... Hey, I am the bad guy. <laughs> just folders of stuff. But that's what Enron did. It's not that big of a... But big. Enron is... It's digital. Like, there are digital copies everywhere that if you could break it... Like, that's way different than having a folder with handwritten... We killed him. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> like he's the boss. No one's over. Yeah. Like it was literally his call to write it down. Yes, that's all. That's it. Uh, I'm a bad guy. Yeah. I'll throw it away. <laughs> Whose fault was it? Mine. <laughs> Maybe don't write that, Gowan. You stay mind your own. I'm gonna write down all my things. Day fourteen. Still not safe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> throw it away. What if these Day miners 15, getting worse? Say what you will about miners. Good eating. <laughs> Day uh, 16. Hashtag I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Still not going to do nothing. <laughs> Forgive me, Paul. <laughs> uh, Julie also says this slide. I won't let myself be easily used again. Now, that does imply, mm. though. Yep. But yep. Listen, I'll put up a fight. I will be used again. But I will put up a fight. And I think that's all you could ask for. Honestly, I appreciate her humility. Uh, yes, because exactly right. this is like, I'm never going to be used again. Listen, knowing me, this will 100% happen again. But I will take note of the red flags. And I will maybe take my time. But I will be used again. Mm. <laughs> Don't you worry. Dan? Um, so... I'm very concerned that Mounty Jack is not a good detective. It takes him forever to piece together that the, the gang is in Hope Valley. Like, I feel like he just meanders through the woods and asks Mounties just pieces of information that could have done it. And literally, he never figures it out till they go, it's in some town called Hope Valley. And then he's like, oh, man, it takes him forever I just don't trust him piecing anything together anymore. Really, really unfortunate there. Um, uh, and then I would—I need somebody to explain to me how he pulled off this this 
ruse of horses in the woods with tablecloths on because there's some structure in, in a very short amount of time. He knows they're captured. He builds some structure on top of the saddle. He throws, he has red tablecloths at his disposal. He throws them over and then somehow he takes a bunch of horses with him out into the woods. I think it was just their two horses. He, no, he's on a horse. The, the other guy's on a horse. I don't, like, he brought a bunch of horses with some, like, contraption on it and a red tablecloth, and his his flashlight is from, like, 1980s, at the very least. <laughs> it's great. It's halogen. Beam. It yeah, is, it yeah, is high beam. <laughs> and, and not only What do you want him to do, throw fire in the forest? And these horses are all, <laughs> they're all tied <laughs> up, like, give to it certain... Time. Give it time. You gotta let it... Yeah. Nope. <laughs> and there it is. And then they're like, I think, Jack, the fire's too big. They're, that's oh, just a no, horse. Oh, no, it's getting out of hand. Is the that horse, a horse the on horse. fire? <laughs> um, the, the ruse doesn't make any sense. Horse comes galloping out. There's no one on that horse. Wait a minute. And then everybody gets shot. Gunshot shows up. Yeah, Eldrick Woods. Um, and then Elizabeth has a couple for me. At One, she's teaching kids about Newton's first law of motion, and she says, an object at rest usually stays at rest. <laughs> That's not exactly, an object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by another force. It's not luck of the draw there. Like, this cup, without any other force, couldn't just be like, I'm out of here. Like, it's going to stay right there unless something happens to it. If you're going to teach them, maybe be specific. And then later, she said, I'm just waiting for the dog. She says this line, I'm waiting for the dog to wake up from his fifth nap already today, and then makes a joke about how lazy it is. Why are you counting the dog's naps? It's a dog. That's what a dog does all day. Like, just let the dog be a dog. Like, poor poor dog that had Jack as an owner now has to deal with nap counter McGee over there, making sure the dog's awake on occasion. Not okay by me. Sorry. That's all I got. Love it. Um... Let's get to Hopes and Valleys, okay. where we share whether it's something that we're excited about and or nervous about for the future of this show. Hope or a valley and or panda. Uh, I got two hopes. Can I list two hopes? No. I'm sure. Why I want to list two yeah, hopes. I didn't, I didn't have a wait what. So uh, first of all, I want to learn more about Jack's dad and his past. And I'm hopeful that maybe we'll get more backstory there because I'm pretty excited about learning more about mysterious Jack. Uh, and then the second thing, guys, this is actually kind of a monumental episode. Uh, with Gowan, we have now had two episodes where something was not resolved. Uh, Gowan uh, hiding something. Uh, so this leads me to hope that they're go we're going to be getting into increasingly complex plot points uh, that are going to span uh, three, four, five episodes. Because I do believe that this Gowan plot point is going to run at least to the end of this season. I, uh, and so I think you're hey, not that's, wrong. that's cool. You're not wrong there, which would be my only hope for the episode, is, is we didn't have all of our questions answered this week, which was great. But I just, I, we know at some point it turns into Hope Valley, not Coal Valley. And Gowan is in every episode of this show. And I just don't know how. I know we did a bit okay. earlier. I don't know what they're going to do with this character. When you're this mean, your time on a show should be numbered. Like, your, your days should be numbered. It just should. And they're going to keep this guy around. I don't know what they're going to do with him. They're going to waste all those great speeches he gives, too. So, Dan, redemption yeah. has no boundaries. Redemption does not have any boundaries. That's accurate. Amen. Amen. And amen. Um, yeah, I mean, same, same thing for me. Hope and a valley. Just, you know, excited. Like, he was fantastic. I want more of those scenes. Um, but uh, also concerned to see... What happens? Like, is it going to be a back and forth thing? Like, he's slowly getting kinder, but like, you know, he's still a you know jerk. I don't know. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Um, pocket watch, no pocket to be found in this oh episode. Really, a uh, few of a uh, few children in this episode. Right. Like, I think that one uh, classroom scene, and that's it. So no pockets. Um, smolder uh, rating. What would you give Jack Smolder in this episode? No, uh, Smolder. No. I, you had that I last scene at the very end where he's getting, he's kind of bidding her farewell, and uh, his eyes get wide, her eyes get wide. It, it's it's pretty, but it's not full Smolder. I would say uh, I give it only a four to this week, but it's not bad. A four here is still yeah. uh, like an eight anywhere else. I think that's a, a very fair rating. I'm also I'll go with a four point four five um yeah just not a lot you know he's there's a lot of action for jack in this episode yeah. not a lot of eyes yeah. you know i love him you know grabbing his hat and 
getting that guy like that was that's exciting, but the smolder left a little bit to be desired in this episode. Yeah, I was gonna to go. I was gonna go three, and it's not once again the showstopper here is Krako in that scene. That oh, last scene yeah. when she all of a sudden has this like hope return to her face. She does a great job saying very little and just leaving it all there on her face. She does a great job. She, you know, she gets the, you know, the bulk of that there. Jack doesn't really smolder in this episode. Three is kind of being kind, in all honesty, um, for what he does this episode. Now, he's smoldered He the still heck out exists, of though, so yeah. like, there's, there's only some, so There's ba- some built-in yeah. smolder there, yeah. for sure. Yeah. For sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, I think he has a little bit of a, 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 like, a four pocket, to be honest with you. Like, he could just... A four pocket? He could just go... Mm-hmm. And I'd give him a four. Yeah, like no, just that's so four's the, be- the breathing. Barrel basement bottom. Might be. Wow. Uh, I think he could probably go lower if he, it was a. There could probably be some bad smolder. What? I'm it's just bad talking. Sm- like negative smolder? If he wanted. He said, I think he's a good enough actor that he could pull off an unattractive smolder if he wanted to. Mm. Do we have a. Um, it's time for. Uh, I don't see. We don't, I, I think at some point. Brian Harold sent another one in, but I just went to the email and don't see it. <sighs> Guys, please send us some what's calling my heart. It would it would call our heart. It, <laughs> it would call our it. heart. Uh, Panda, what's calling your heart, pal? Uh, sharp cheddar cheese. The cheese sticks, reduced fat. They're great. Really tasty. All right, guys, we will be back tomorrow where we will be reviewing a classic from 2017, Christmas Getaway, Wingleheads Unite. Uh, we will be back then until then. Fist. Yeah, like Unite. Yeah. Uh, until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live. And yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray. Set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com. For more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free, you can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.